After this, no one is like him, himself God. Huh? They are told, Bantasi if they do like so. Oh, they should be careful from that. They should not tell like this. Now, I request Sipat Kritananda Prabhu to speak to us. Kitananda Prabhu is also Sanyasi. He has come to so manageable condition, but even Sanyasi is there. Namaste, Sarasoti Devi, Bodhaman Kachan, and the Sashishan of Adi Pasta. Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Pramukha Namas, you pray to get out of us because we go back. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Rama. It's such a great pleasure to be in the assembly of great Vaishnavas. It's pleasure to be in the presence of His Holiness Narayan Maharaj. I feel very inadequate to speak before this limited assembly. I am just a simple farm boy. But for Krishna. I don't know very much, but I know that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God. I know that He is the only doer. We have independence to desire, but unless He fulfills our desire, our desire remains unfulfilled. <coughs> He is the only doer. All others are done. <laughs> I also understand that the essence of spiritual life is simply to surrender to his doing. To become his willing instrument. To say, not my will, but thine be done. I think of the great saint whom Prabhupada met and recognized as a very holy man, although he was just lying on the ground. He didn't display any outward symptoms of holiness, like special clothing or signs. But he was recognized as a very holy man and offered due respect. And then inquired from him. that sadhu could also recognize that Prahlad was a very advanced spiritual man and therefore considered him a worthy person to speak to. Prahlad asked him, how have you become so advanced in Krishna consciousness? You appear to be quite fatty or well built or uh, although you, you possess nothing.
using content. But you don't have any of this world's things of contentment. And the, the holy man said, sometimes I eat very tasty food, sometimes it is very stale and unpalatable. Sometimes I sleep in a palace, sometimes I sleep on the ground. I have learned to be content with whatever I have. And it's also stated in the 52nd chapter of the 10th canto, Krishna says that a Ramana who is content with what he has <coughs> is a truly elevated Brahman and can be satisfied although he has nothing. But a discontent man, though he possesses the throne of Indra, will remain discontent. And then he concludes, I bow my head. This is Krishna's. I bow my head to a Brahmin who is content. Then Krishna, for now as it is, How do I use it in the best way for your service? Not my sense gratification. Sense gratification is had even by the dogs and hogs and stew who eat stew. Sense gratification is enjoyed even in hell with hellish delights. <coughs> I bow my head to a contented frog. I don't know anything else, but I'm very content to sit in this assembly of questions. Thank you for your these ideas. I appreciate you. <laughs> In Shastra, there is so much glorification of Sarnavati. So much. But Sarnavati itself is not bhakti. It is the door of bhakti. Without this, we cannot reach to the Bhakti. Really, the service, like all our senses and modes, required of Karnak, Gyan, and Job, and etc., without any worthy what? Desire. Desire. This is Bhakti. And it touches from last point Shraddha to Madanaksh Bhav Radhika. Those who will read Chaitanya Charitamri, the books of our Goswami, Guru Sanatana, 
रघुनाथ जी गोस्वामी विश्वनाथ चौवर्ती ठाकुर भक्ति जन ठाकुर ऐसी जब मस्ट कम थ्री टू सर्व कृष्ण इन वन ऑफ दी रस इट मस्ट कम यू आर वेरी फॉर्चुनेट टू कम इन द लाइन ऑफ श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु यू डो नॉट नो बट वन डे यू विल नो सो ग्रीट हैज नो कंट्रोल सो ग्रीट वेर वार ग्रीट शुड गो अनर्थित चरिंग चिराग करुणिया वतीर्ण करो समर्पय तुम उन्नत जल रसान भक्ति स्त्री दिस इज द एम एंड ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ आवर लाइफ जय चैतन्य महाप्रभु कैम टू गिव दिस मंजरी भाव समर्पय तुम करुणिया आउट ऑफ मसी ही डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड दिस पात्र आर नो पात्र नो कंडीशन मेन पात्र क्वालिफाइड एंड गेट दिस एंड इन दिस मंजरी भाव लाइक इन द गाइडेंस ऑफ रूप गोस्वामी आराधा भाष्य सो वी शुड ट्राई टू रीड द बुक्स ऑफ गोस्वामी एंड भागवत चैतन्य चैतन्य यू सी दिस इज दिस इज ऑल राइट Or this should go there. Why not? So, Sarvanati is essential, but itself not bhakti do. If anyone, anyone has greed like this, to be the maid servant of Radhika, like in the guidance of Karu Parati Manjari, oh, this is our goal of life. Essence of all the teaching life. Now we are discussing about Simad Bhagavat Katha. We have discussed Dhruva, not Dhruva. Who was the devotee? He did bhakti. He was chanting and meditating mantra of Vishnu, Narayan. He was disciple of. गोस्वामी बट नॉट योर भक्ति फ्रेंड ही टू दर्शन ऑफ नारायण एंड फ्रेंड ऑल हिज बडली डिजायर वेंट बट इज स्टिल एट द टाइम ऑफ डेथ बाई बडी यू मस्ट गोइंग देयर इन थ्रू लो वाई Because he had still some affection for mother. Oh, where is my mother? Without mother, I cannot go. She is my guru. That is why he was given to Dhruva Lok, a Vishnu Lok in this Brahmanda, Hari Lok. Rama Priya Bhai Kulsa. So this is not Sudha Bhakti. It may be after the darshan of. Krishna, he told that I was touching some piece of glass, but luckily I found out diamond, and he wanted to give up, but what he got? He wanted in the beginning, and for this he had that he so much hard study. So. Now I am told that you will have to be here and to test the fruit of this bhakti, kingdom of all. You are there. So we don't like bhakti like him. Pralad Maharaj, he was Jnani bhakta. Don't think Jnani means those who want to inherit their soul in. Brahma, not that. They are Gyani, Nirvishesh Gyani, or Goswami, or Guru Bhakti has what? Khandan Priya. Rejected them. 
सो नॉट दैट ज्ञानी ज्ञानी भक्त विभक्ति और भक्त बट विथ एवुलेंस ही इज यूज टू डू भक्ति दैट माई वर्सेबल इज इट प्रिफेयर क्या इन नो अफी चाहिए इन नवर टाइम टू नो मासे नो ईटिंग नो ड्रिंकिंग नथिंग वट सर्विस एनी वन कैन डू बिकॉज इज लाइक फादर मॉदर सो बींग ही भक्ति प्योर बट वी डू नमस्कार एंड देन वी प्रोसीड टूअर अंबरीश महाराज he was pure bhakt and he was doing bhakti by the all the limbs of can you you know गोस्वामी <laughs> So Shri Gurudev is now discussing the uh, stage of Ambarish Maharaj's bhakti, and he's already mentioned the speciality of his bhakti over Pralad Maharaj. Pralad Maharaj is a siddha; he's a perfected personality, and Ambarish. is only a sadhak but still his bhakti is superior because he has an essential ingredient for the mamata his affection is very personalized he performed worship of the lord with all the limbs of his body as shri gurudev has said sahabai mana krishna padara bindaya pachamsi varkanta gunana varnaye karo hare mandir manaj वृंदावन He was the emperor of the entire planet, and yet he saw it simply with as much value as you would see a stone. He was the emperor by birth, but yet he saw it completely as insignificant in relationship to his Easter day. Just as Pujapad Shri Kirtananda Maharaj was saying, how he was seeing Krishna everywhere. So he performed yukta by ragya. all of his wealth all of his utility he performed he offered to krishna and this was his stage of bhakti so this is superior to prahlad as gurudev has just said prahlad was worshiping bhagavan the all pervasive bhagavan in the sense of bhagavan could have come as in any form he came as nishinga and prahlad worship but he didn't offer him Water or a fan, etc. There was no personal mamata there, but Ambarish he possessed this. So, in the speciality of bhakti, Shri Gurudev has said these gradations of bhakti. There's nothing inferior about this gradation in a material sense. Gurudev has said it's a speciality, a progression of speciality. So, Ambarish Maharaj, in the performance of his seva. One time in Braj, he was performing a courtesy brat with his queen in uh, Madhuvan, and on the day when it was time to break his fast, practically, the great yogi Durvasa Rishi, he came to Ambarish Maharaj's palace, 
and Indian etiquette states that uh, if you're going to offer someone a guest, when, when a guest comes, then you must offer some uh, food, etc. So Ambarish Maharaj, he offered Durvasa uh, some prashad, but Durvasa said, you just uh, wait, I have to chant my anik, and then I will return and take. But Durvasa, his meditation was on Nirvishesh Brahm, so his anik was a long time. So he was in the Jumuna. And the time for breaking the param was coming closer and closer. Ambarish Maharaj had to make a decision, which is more important, my honor to Bhakti Devi or my honor in etiquette to this great yogi. So he was in a great dilemma. He didn't want to make any transgression. So he consulted his brahmanas, and finally he himself decided, I will take three drops of Charanamrita. And this is breaking and not breaking simultaneously. So this way I am performing my bhakti, this was his consideration, and I am also respecting my honorable guest, Durvasa, Durvasa Rishi. So Durvasa, in his mystic meditation, he understood what had taken place. And he came into the palace again, he saw Ambarish Maharaj, and immediately he understood what had happened, everything. And he became infuriated. And he grabbed one of his locks from his hair and he smashed it onto the ground and out of that lock came a huge fiery demon with huge teeth and fire and a trident and came stalking towards Ambarish Maharaj to annihilate him. And we see at this point the purity of Ambarish Maharaj's bhakti, how he just stood fearlessly in the sight of this enormous fiery demon coming to consume him. He knew that Krishna is the supreme controller entirely. Rake Krishna Mareke, Mare Krishna Rakeke, that Krishna can destroy me or save me, whatever is his will. So he was totally surrendered to this um, Rakshasi coming towards him. And at that time, Surasan Chakra immediately came to the aid of his dear devotee and burnt that Rakshasi to a cinder. And then the Surasan Chakra turned towards Durvasa. So what was the stage of Durvasa's bhakti? He saw this Sudhasan chakra coming towards him and he ran. There was no question of fearless surrender in front of that Sudhasan chakra. He ran, he ran all over the universe. First he ran in the oceans, he ran in the caves, he ran in the sky, he ran under the earth, he ran in the hellish planets, he ran in the higher planets, he ran everywhere. He ran for one whole year. He went to um, Lord Shiji. Lord Shiji said, I can't save you. Then he went to Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma also said, I can't save you. Then he finally came to Lord Narayan. And Lord Narayan, he said, Sadhavo Pridayam Mahayam, Sadhunam Pridayam Tvaham. That the devotee is in my heart and I am in his heart. I am completely dependent on my devotee, and my devotee is totally dependent on me. There's nothing whatsoever that I, I cannot protect you from this Sudhasan Chakra. You have to go back to um, Ambarish Maharaj, and you have to beg forgiveness from him. Only he can stop this Sudhasan Chakra. I'm not independent of my devotee. So, Durvasa, he went back to Ambarish Maharaj, who had meanwhile just been waiting the entire year in order to feed his guest. Durvasa, he came back in a very humble state of mind and he offered very beautiful prayers to Ambarish Maharaj. And Ambarish Maharaj was somewhat embarrassed by his prayers. He was a pure bhakta, a shuddha bhakta. And Ambarish Maharaj, in his turn, to stop the Sudasan, consuming Durvasa, he offered Sudhasan Chakra all of his piety that he had incurred through his um, uh, tapasya, through his offerings to Krishna. He offered Krishna anything that I have done that is worthwhile, you please accept this and uh, so that the, this uh, Sudhasan Chakra can be stopped. So we see his complete mood of forgiveness. This was the mood of Ambarish Maharaj. So we see him compared to Durvasa. But also we should consider that Durvasa is a manifestation of Shivji. So how could Shivji perform such an activity? 
and we understand that while Shiji himself was running throughout all the universes, what were all the residents of all those universes thinking? Or why is this great yogi running for his life behind the Sudasan chakra? What has happened? And then everyone would understand, oh, he has offended Ambarish Maharaj. So in other words, all the whole universe was glorifying Ambarish Maharaj, in fact. So what Durvasa did, in fact, was a service, in a sense, to Ambarish Maharaj, in that he brought out and exemplified Ambarish Maharaj's bhakti. Otherwise, how would the world have ever known that, unless this activity had done? So in that sense, just like Shiji comes as Sankaracharya, he comes to perform a most, you know, uh, onious task. He didn't really want to do this task. And nevertheless, as Durvasa, he also uh, performed this task. But still, our consideration is bhakti. And as Srila Gurudev is leading us through these beautiful paths of Srimad Bhagavatam, he is um, illuminating all these different personalities and what is the degree or intensity of their bhakti, what is their focus. Srila Gurudev is constantly pointing out what is our focus in bhakti, who is our Ishtadev. Just now Srila Gurudev said that Sharanagati is the threshold of bhakti. But this is just the beginning of our bhakti. Actually, where is the focus to come? Srila Gurudev has just said, Radha Dasyam, from Shraddha to Madanakya Mahabharata. So all these gradations through all these different personalities are illuminating clearly for our future, perhaps this birth, future births, etc. What is our focus? What is our goal? Where are we going? So from Sharanagati all the way up. So we see in this gradation from Pulag Maharaj, he was, he was a Siddha, a perfected soul. Yet his mamata or his intensity of affection for Krishna is not as great as Ambarish Maharaj. So this is the um, point of this uh, pastime. This is to show us what is Shuddha Bhakti. Ambarish Maharaj was in Dasya Bhav, but he had some Aishwarya there also. Not so much, not like Prahlad, there was something, but his mamata was very thick. Therefore he's considered Shuddha Bhakta. So in this progression we can see his exalted state and we can learn from this how we can uh, take this into our own lives and intensify our focus of what is pure bhakti, what is our path, what is our gradation. It's all step by step by step, gradual progression that Srila Gurudev is leading us through. These steps of Shuddha Bhakti, pure bhakti. Enjoy. About Manmamasa Bhakti cannot be there. Prahlad Maharaj is Siddha Bhakta. But Prahlad Maharaj cannot start with whole length of body. <clears throat> and Ambarish Maharaj, he can do. He used to be in Madhuban, in Vrindavan. He used to do Parikrama of Vraja, Radha Kund, Shamkund, Govardhan, Nandadam, Varsana, all places. So he had some taste in these things. So, there is some bhaisishtya in his bhakti, a speciality. <coughs> but, more than him, Pranibhakta Hanuman is more superior. 
is serving his Prabhu and Siddha Bhakta also. More than that, Pandavas, Prempa, they can see, they can sleep with Krishna side by side. Sometimes Krishna becomes charioter of and serving Arjuna and Pandavas. And he tells Hanuman to serve Pandavas, Arjuna, to be on his top of his chariot. And you should save Arjuna. Engaged also, he was engaged and also he engaged Hanuman in the service of Pandavas. But more than Pandavas, Uddha, among all Jadubansi, Jadwa. And he prays, went to Vrindavan and saw the affection and mamata and everything to Nand Baba and Yashoda Maya. And moreover, he saw gopis and moreover, he saw the mood of Srimati Radhika in the Pradampa. And then he was very much satisfied. Dirhir me Mahabhara. Oh, you have done mercy to me by your dira that Srimati Radhika did Brahmagi. Sometimes sabaging Krishna, sometimes praising, sometimes laughing. Like man, Divya Unmar, and all these things. And then Uddha began to pray, Asam ho charana reem susam ham syam vrinda abane kilm gurp na tau satina jad dusta jam sajan adh patan jaitva reje mukand padaveng satipi mele. Oh, I want to be Prayed of cross in Vrindavan anywhere. Why, when Gopi will go to Abhishad to Krishna, their foot dust will be on my head. So he's still in Kusan Sarovar, that is Uddha Kunda, is like a blade of the cross. And in the last he told, Mande Nanda Prajay Srinam, Padrenu Mabhiksna Sahajasam Harikatho Gitas Unati Bhuvanatra. The gopis who told this separation mode in so high way that if anyone hearing, whole world is satisfied. So one of the dust. So one of dust, the dust will be of Radhika Vibhanti. So you should know the glorification of gopis and Radhika. So why not agree to be their great servant? This is the main object offer of life and You know Chitra Ketu Maharaj, he was a great devotee in the form of Vritrasu. Uh, he has prayed in a gopi mood bhav. And that is why one of the symptoms of Bhagavad has been told in Padma Puran, where the life of Vritrasu has been written. So Syamrani will tell the life of Vrittrasu. And Chitra Ketu Maharaj. Om Ajnanam Timirandasya Gyanam Janasalakaya Takshuram Yilikam Yena Tasmai Sri Guru Venama Shri Gurudev has ordered me to say a few words about the history of King Chitraketu. First I'd like to say that Sri Guru is independent. 
One cannot control him. I studied for one hour about Maharaj Ambarish today. And I pray to Gurudev, really, please call me for that and don't call me for King Chutakeza because I don't have time to read about it. <laughs> so King Chutakeza uh, was a great king of the world. And the one of the duties of the king is to have a son who can continue the dynasty and perform activities for the benefit of the entire world. By the will of providence, King Chuchukesu's first wife, uh, Krita Duti, could not bear any children. So although he loved her, he took his second wife, and she also could not bear any children. So he took wife after wife after wife, and finally, he had thousands and thousands of wives. And by the will of providence, they were all barren. So, by chance, Angira Muni, who is a uh, great friend, associate of Sri Narad Muni, he went to the house of the king, and the king put him on his throne and glorified him. And he expressed his great sadness that I have so many thousands of wives but no son. Please give me some kind of benediction, some blessing that I can have a son. So Angara Rishi knew that that would not make the king happy. Amara, Amarish Maharaj, because he was engaged in the service of the Lord with all of his senses in mind, not only he, but all of his citizens considered even heavenly planets and all mystic powers to be as insignificant as small pieces of dirty stone. Maharaj Ambush had no attraction for his wife, children, relatives, friends, chariots, elephants, treasury garments, or anything. But unlike him, Chitriketu Maharaj was very, very anxious to have a son. So because of his particular um, lack of Sukritis and Sanskars at that time, Angira Rishi could not uh, teach him. He knew I, could, I can't teach him renunciation at this time. So great sages have great plans in order to bring their disciples to the platform of renunciation. For example, the guru of Haras Chandra, he himself, by his mystic power, made a snake bite his son and kill him to create this detachment, and then he himself brought his son back to life. So Amir Rishi had a plan for King Chitraketu. He said, I'm going to give this sweet rice to you to give to your principal and first wife, Krita Duti. So the king was so happy, even though Maharaj uh, Angira Rishi said, this son will be the cause of great happiness to you and also great lamentation. So the king thought, no problem. He'll be a little naughty, so I'll get a little upset. No problem. So he gave this um, special sacrifice to his first wife, and he begot a very beautiful son. As is the nature of co-wives, his many thousands of co-wives became envious because now King Chitraketu was showing even more favor to his first wife because she was the mother of his son who he had now given his life to. Srila Gurudev said in relation to, um, I forget who, Somebody had co-wives, and they didn't mind. Kunti or Maharaj Dasrath. But Gurudev said, even if your husband has other wives, don't mind. Be happy for him. But these other co-wives, he said, it's no harm to you if your husband has other wives. He wants his uh, all disciples to be so open, so liberal, so generous. Just like the tree, he said, that gives its fruits bark and everything, 
and doesn't ask even for water when it's thirsty. So King Shitakesha's wives were just the opposite. They became so envious and they made a conspiracy. They had a meeting amongst themselves and they decided this is very, very bad that he's showing so much favor to this other wife and totally neglecting us just like we're some maid servants. So they decided, what shall we do to take revenge? We'll poison that son, thinking somehow or other that would bring them happiness. So they gave poison to the son, and the son died. And when the king came to the crib of the son and saw his dead son, and heard about his dead son because there were screams in the court, he was running to his son and fainting and getting up and weeping and running and fainting. And his hair became scattered, his clothes became scattered, and the same with his wife. And the whole, um, the whole kingdom became in lamentation, and the wives were also pretending to be in lamentation. At that time, Anhir Muni returned to the king, and Narada Muni came with him. And now the king, because of all the misery that happened to him, by the mercy of the sages, by the mercy of the Lord, now the king was getting ready to hear properly. So by the will of Angira Rishi and Narada Rishi, the son came to life. And they asked the son, do you want to go back to your father? So the son replied, who is my father? He is not my father. By some past fruited activities, he became my father for some time. And now I'll have another father, and he'll become the son of another father. Sometimes one's enemy of one's past life becomes one's son so that that son can give grief. Our Srila Prabhupada told one history that in a village in India, one rich man who lived in a big house, a beggar came to that rich man's house and the rich man beat him. And everyone was wondering, why did this innocent beggar get beaten? So there was an astrologer in the village and he said it was because the beggar was previously the father of the rich man and he used to beat his son. So now he got beaten back. So sometimes an enemy will become a son just to give his father misery. So because of the teachings of the little son, King Chitraketu became renounced and was now ready to follow Narada and Angira Rishi. And he received a wonderful mantra from them and by that mantra, he was able to realize his relationship with Lord Vishnu. He entered the Vaikuntha planets and saw face to face Lord Sankushan, an expansion of Lord Balaram. This same Chitraketu was also, also became a great friend of Lord Shiva. And Chitraketu also now had great powers, being a pure devotee of the Lord. So he rode around one day in his airplane and he came to the spot in Kailash where Lord Shiva was giving a lecture in front of many, many great sages, thousands of great sages. And Lord Shiva was sitting naked in that assembly giving his class. And Parvati was sitting on his lap and she was also naked. So, King Chitraketu, being a very close friend of Lord Shiva, said, Oh, isn't this a strange way to give a lecture? So he wasn't really criticizing, and anyway, friends can joke with each other, but he was just saying this is a very unusual way to give a lecture. So, Lord Shiva smiled because he knew it was just the friendly joking of his friend, and being free from lust, and his wife also being free from lust, <coughs> there was no um, there was no contamination, and whatever he would say would be purifying to all the sages. But his wife Parvati, 
She became very angry. How dare you criticize such a great devotee as Lord Shiva? So she cursed him that you're acting just like a demon because you're doing Vaishnava Bharat that's very demoniac. So you should become a demon. I curse you to become a demon. And Chitraketu very humbly accepted that curse. So Lord Shiva told his wife that this is the sign of a pure Vaishnava. He's so powerful being an associate of Lord Narayan that he could have cursed you back. But he didn't. He humbly accepted your curse. Of course, we should understand that Parvati also couldn't make any mistake because she is the powerful material energy and she is also a pure devotee. Both Shivji and Parvati are our gurus. But in order to teach us to be very careful in understanding who is a Vaishnava and what is Vaishnava behavior, she, and also to show the glory of King Chitraketu, she cursed him. So in his next birth, he became a demon. He was in the body of a demon. Excuse me, I made a mistake. He didn't become a demon. He had the body of a demon. He uh, manifested from a fire, from a great fire sacrifice. In this fire sacrifice, he who was performing the fire sacrifice made a mistake in his mantra. He was supposed to say, Trusta? Trusta Rishi was supposed to say that out of this of fire sacrifice will become a great demon who will kill Indra. But he made some mistake in the mantra that came out, we will uh, create a great demon who will be killed by Indra. So this great demon with red hair and big teeth and a trident came out. Very, very tall. How tall? So tall that anybody could fit under his feet. So he challenged Indra and he had a great fight with Indra and he was smashing thousands of demigods under his feet. And Indra kept trying to kill him, but he couldn't kill him. So uh, now this devotee in the form of the demon, that is Vritrasura, he wanted to be killed by Indra so that he could be free from his uh, demoniac body. So he offered very beautiful prayers to the Lord. And this is what Srila Gurudev uh, introduced in the beginning. That actually, even though he's in the body of a demon, which shows that only a pure devotee can recognize another pure devotee, or by the mercy of a pure devotee can we recognize a pure devotee. So in the mood of Braj Bhakti and Gopi Bhav, his prayer was like this to the Lord that the um, birds, the way the uh, birds relate with their mother is that when the mother comes to the nest, the uh, mother brings the worms to the birds. So it seems like the birds have been waiting in great love for their mother, but they really haven't. They're waiting for the worms. They really don't want their mother. They want what their mother has to give them to satisfy their senses. So he said, this kind of love, this is not really pretty. And Jiva Goswami has explained in his pretty Sandarva, what is pretty or what is pure love? So he said, this kind of love I don't want. Then higher than that is the calf. The calf is waiting for his cow, his mother, all day to come back to him in the evening. So when the mother comes, the calf drinks the milk from the mother. So it's not something outside the mother that the calf wants. The milk is inside the mother, but it's still not the mother proper. It's still something from the mother that the calf wants. So Richard Sir said, and he's saying this on the battlefield, so showing that there's no condition in offering devotion and love to the Lord if one has that purity, and if one is anyagi lasita sinya. He has no material desires. He doesn't allow karma or yan to cover his devotion. Then under any circumstance, um, what is that? Taila Aravata of a Chinbagati, just like a stream of honey that flows down uninterrupted. 
The devotee can serve Krishna in any condition without any impediments. And that kind of devotion, as Srila Gurudev said on the first night, is the only kind of devotion that fully satisfies the soul. So, he said, I don't want that kind of love. What kind of love do I want? A wife or a beloved who sees that her husband, a beloved wife, who sees that her husband has come home late. He's not home yet, but he's late and the time is passing and she's already made dinner and it's passing more and more and more. And she's worried about him. Real Vedic wife is that she doesn't care for her own happiness, she's only concerned for her husband's happiness. She was in so much anxiety, pacing back and forth, asking the children, do you know what happened to your father? What happened to him? And they, of course, can't answer. So in great, great anxiety, she's thinking, well, he was taking the train home, maybe the train got derailed, and she's thinking the worst. This is this anxiety is due to love. So actually, there was nothing wrong with him. He's just delayed for some non-dangerous reason. But out of overwhelming love, she's in overwhelming anxiety. So Srila Gurudev is explaining that this is the supreme Uttama Bhakti of the gopis. That when Narada Muni came to them saying, Krishna has a headache, and we need the dust of some devotee's feet to cure him. All the other devotees said, no, Krishna is God, I'll go to hell. But the gopis said, here, take some dust, let's get some more dust, let's get some piles of dust. And thousands of, of gopis were getting thousands of piles of dust. And Narada said, aren't you worried that you'll go to hell? And the gopis said, never mind, we shall go to hell, but let Krishna be cured. So a loving wife doesn't care for her own a happiness or comfort only her husband's. And so Srila Gurudev is explaining and Srila Jiva Goswami that Vitrasura, although in the body of the demon, he had love of the gopis in his heart. He had that kind of love that he wanted. And so his love is extremely high and we want to follow him before we can become a gopi. Gurudev said, if you want to become a gopi, first you have to be Pallad, First you have to be Ambrish Maharaj, first you have to be Hanuman, not to jump past them. Thank you.